clarity in all regards to uh, the product has to be clear. You need to be able to communicate it clearly. Um, the branding should be clear as well. You know, people like to see a, a, a solid brand behind something, um, similar colors all around logo, obviously if you can't explain it. You can't sell it, whether it's through words or the text on the screen or an illustration or a diagram or something, then it's just not going to work. Cause you know, your, your lead's not going to understand it. And they're not going to want to buy something they don't understand. Right. Welcome to another edition of Humans of Flipper, the series where we talk to the real life buyers and sellers of digital assets. Today's guest is Alexander Fissaro. He's a web designer and business consultant in New York City with his own company called eBiz Selects. His company helped people navigate the entire online space, specializing in process automation for growth and e-commerce exits. So today, let's get into our chat with Alexander. Alexander Fissaro, thanks so much for joining me on Humans of Flipper. Thanks, Brad. Thanks for having me. How would you describe what you do? You're a business broker or entrepreneur? I'm definitely more of an entrepreneur, uh, but I also do do business brokering. Um, the majority of my business is uh, mainly finding solutions and, and just really client work. Um, when it comes to business brokering, I'm very selective uh, mm. just because it takes a lot of time you know, to get to know the buyer, to get to know their operation. So for brokering, I mainly will just take on friends um, I've always enjoyed networking and meeting people. So over the years, that's opened up a lot of doors in that regard. Um, these people know that I sell on Flippo a lot. So when they ask uh, me to take on their listings, it almost kind of comes natural. That's the reason I added the business unit of brokering to my agency, ibizselect.net, uh, because we specialize in um, internet businesses and uh, process automation and website design and um, e-commerce businesses, there's so much like back and forth when, in regards to buying and selling assets and changing portfolios. Um, so it almost just like made sense. And taking it back to where it all began, what attracted you to this sort of career in business breaking? I sort of fell into it, but you know, I, I enjoy it. So like, as I was falling, I didn't really stop myself. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I, I've always enjoyed finding solutions for stuff. Um, plus, I understand technology very well. So it kind of just meshed together. Um, my dad had a business. Uh, he was a real estate management and uh, real estate broker, um, real estate development. So um, when I graduated college and I had a lot of time in my hands, I would often help him out with his business. But um, I would often run into roadblocks, and so there wasn't really much technology in there. Um, so when I got into it, uh, I was always looking for better ways to do things, and I found ways to automate things using technology. You know, just doing a quick Google search whenever I ran into an issue. And I like the lifestyle, you know, being able to work anywhere uh, is always a, a solid plus, right? <laughs> mm, yeah. And I'm lucky you. I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs that I've interviewed and just unlocking that lifestyle seems to be the biggest appeal, working on their own terms and their own hours and their own location. So you've definitely nailed yeah. it. Yeah. But you do run your own company called eBiz. What's the genesis of that? How did that all come about? Um, so eBizSelect.net uh, came about... Um, it's funny because when I, when I chose the name ebizselect.net, I always had planned to change it just because one, a, a .net domain isn't really the best, right? .coms are always the ones that you go for. Mm. Um, so, and I've always been um, a proponent of the idea that the name of your business doesn't really matter. It's more of the quality of work that you bring, right? Yeah. Um, I just needed a marketing front, uh, something to put on business cards, um, you know, before I said to myself, I'm going to start an agency, I was already really doing agency work just by helping people and, and getting paid for it, right? Um, so uh, I, I mainly just used it, ebizselect.net, as um, a means of automating and like making processes, um, making them more efficient, using them as funnels, client acquisition, sales tool, information source, that sort of thing. Uh, it helps out a lot with... Um, taking on clients and making things more efficient. You know, if, I, if I'm doing the same task over and over again for multiple different clients, then um, having that automation aspect really helps out a lot. And you are obviously very skilled when it comes to selling on Flipper. We would call you a super seller. You've got 100% positive feedback from all your transactions, which is a great feat. Uh, how do you think you achieved this? I guess just being true, right? Just being yourself. Um, growing up, my mom's always had a good heart. You know, she was always, always the one to help people. Um, and my dad was always more of the businessman, right? Making deals around town. 
Um, like when you asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up, when I was younger, I would say I wanted to be a businessman. Mm. All right, very broad <laughs> answer to that question, right? Like what is like business of what? <laughs> you know? But um, so I guess you just put two and uh, those two together and um, just being a little bit of both, I guess, right? Um, being true to yourself, uh, doing it for the right reasons, and just understanding transactions and and making sure it's mutual and everyone's um, happy with the end result is really important. Yeah, nice. That's a very personal answer. I like that. What are the key strategies you use when you're turning an asset into something more profitable? Clarity in all regards to uh, the product has to be clear. You need to be able to communicate it clearly. Um, the branding should be clear as well. You know, people like to see a, a solid brand behind something, um, similar colors all around, logo, obviously. And then I guess from a high level, bringing value to something. You know, if you, you have a domain, um, okay, good. You have, a, you have a target domain, but there's nothing behind that, right? So what value are you going to bring to the user when they actually visit that domain, right? The backend tech, the product fulfillment side of it. Being clear in all aspects um, and really bringing value uh, to the product fulfillment. You know, I had a, a, my, one of my first websites ever. It was called greenenergysolutions.com. And it was basically, um, it piggybacked off of energy de deregulation, which I'm sure you're not even familiar with that. But in, in the States here, it's, it's a, a pretty solid industry. Okay. Um, so the energy industry is made up, usually, um, historically, it's one entity would handle producing the energy, selling the energy, energy, transporting it to people's houses and to businesses. But in recent years, that's become deregulated. So now there's different entities. There's um, independent contractors for all those different aspects of the business. Um, so I use that. And uh, basically the website was traffic will come to the website. It would collect all the information that they needed and then it would be like a lead source. I would sell the lead um, somewhere else. But the problem I had was once people got onto the website, they didn't understand anything. And for that reason, they didn't convert. And the business just stopped as soon as traffic got there because it wasn't clear, right? There was no clarity at that point. Mm. Um, so I spent like thousands of dollars sending traffic there and it just wouldn't convert. And that was a solid lesson. You can't explain it. You can't sell it, whether it's through words or the text on the screen or an illustration or a diagram or something then it's just not going to work because, you know, your, your lead's not going to understand it. And they're not going to want to buy something they don't understand, right? And like you said at the top, that if you're selective with who you bring on board and your business brokering, if you have a really good vetting process, then that's how you achieve 100% positive feedback. You're just only going through those high quality listings. So that's really sound advice. But I'd love to know what the future looks like for Alexander and eBiz. Do you have any particular goals in mind? I've really really been liking email marketing more and more lately. It's been growing as a field. So I can see myself getting into that more. I'm actually working with a company now um, where I'm building out uh, email marketing campaigns and automation trip campaigns, things like that. So email marketing is definitely on the front. Getting involved in other niche markets on the internet, you know, things are always coming about. Um, like the uh, premium content creator niche is getting huge. Um, so I have a business unit coming out for that as well, because I can see that definitely going somewhere. And then another thing is, you know, I like to paint. <laughs> I've been doing Photoshop for about 10 years. Um, that's actually probably the first thing I ever started in like the digital realm was using Photoshop. And so I've been doing that for about the past 10 years. And over the pandemic, I started printing my Photoshop art and adding paint to it. So now it's more of like a mixed media. Yeah. Um, and it's nice to look away from the computer sometimes right? Like we spend 12 hours a day staring at the screen mm. and science tells you that it's not good to do that, right? But you know, all of our work is on here and all of our hobbies are on here. So it's hard to look away sometimes, but um, I was able to find something to help me look away and, and hold a paintbrush instead of just a mouse is nice. <laughs> oh yeah. And just doing something creative. That's not all business and numbers and facts and figures. That's because that, that, I'm a video. Oh yeah. Mainly. So when I'm not doing video work for Flipper, I like to just go out there and take some photos and get out in nature and actually take a step away or else I get sucked. Awesome. Yeah. And it's super important because to have that yin and the yang, right? You can't mm -hmm. have one without the other. 
um, it, it only helps, right? I, I tell people a lot that the breaks you take are almost as important as the work you're doing, right? Taking a break from the work is almost as important as the actual work. Because when you step away for a little bit, you have time for it to marinate and you nine times out of 10 will come up with an even better idea. Like my best ideas are when I go for a run or when I'm in the shower, when I'm not actually doing work, that's when my best ideas come out for sure. What tips would you give to someone that wants to follow in your footsteps and become a successful seller on Flip Up? Just do it. Just you know, throw yourself into the fire. Something that I had trouble with was, was paying for things. And not just because I didn't have the money, but just because it was my first step into actually investing and then getting a return, right? So don't, don't be afraid to invest. Don't be afraid to put money into stuff, um, whether it's you know, a trial or, or something. Um, you know, obviously don't go out there and pay 10 K for something that you've never even like done remotely before, but, mm-hmm. um, you know, don't be afraid of it. And, and something that I've used a lot is putting a dollar amount to the hour. It helps in assessing how much you paid versus the amount of hours that took you to do something. Um, this will help you a lot in making decisions. Alexander, it's been an amazing chat. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise with me and being on here with a flip up. Absolutely, Brad. Thank you so much. I love that you're doing this. I would love to talk to you again, maybe in like a, a six months to a year, a couple of years while something else is going on. Yeah, can check in. Catch you later, man.